Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Punzo and if you're new here, welcome. Perfect. We are gonna be cooking. I have not cooked on this channel. I think I might have gone the whole year without actually sharing any recipe videos. And the channel is after all called The Vendor Chef. And I think the only thing that I've been doing is talking and talking, which I do enjoy. And at least I do have a place where I can talk. But today I decided that I wanted to share with you guys uh, a little butternut soup recipe, which my brothers liked and they like the this is a recipe i did uh, this december i've made one i think um two years back as well and that one was that one was with cream so this one doesn't have cream we're just gonna be using um just the broth and it tasted just as great and at least it's actually affordable so you guys can try it out if you actually want to so i found different recipes online looked at what i actually liked then added my own flavors to it and i hope you guys will also enjoy it without wasting any time let's get started to start off peel the butternut squash Make sure that you clean as you go so that you do not have a lot of mess once you are done. So the next step is to cut the, the butternut squash to into smaller pieces so that it can roast faster. But if you don't actually want to peel and cut it this way, you can cut it uh, in half and then remove the seeds and then just oil it and salt it so that... And then afterwards, you just scrape the insides and then you don't actually have to peel the whole thing. Remember to always clean up after you're done with whatever you're doing so that it does not deal with your next task. We're going to oil and season the butternut with some salt, pepper and ginger for roasting. Transfer into a roasting pan and then put it in the oven at 170 degrees Celsius for an hour. 
but this will also depend on the heat of your oven so always make sure that you're checking it make sure that it is soft and golden brown on the outside so yeah i'm peeling and cutting the onion to brown it So in here I'm putting all the seasoning that's gonna go into the banana squash and onion mix so that uh, and with the chicken stock. So all I added was about a teaspoon of nutmeg um, and then a uh, half a teaspoon of salt, about a teaspoon of black pepper and then half a teaspoon of cumin and then half a teaspoon of ginger then some peri peri and paprika in a pot at medium to high temperature i added in some oil then some onion so that i could brown them So then after it has browned enough, I added in the garlic. This is the garlic that I used, it's crushed garlic. And then I just let that cook for a little bit. After the garlic and onion had cooked completely, I put in the roasted um, banana squash that had been resting and at this time they were very cool. Then I just added them back into the pot and I stirred the pot a little bit and allowed it just to just just to um, reheat again in the pot and that was it. So in this part you would be using chicken stock and if you can afford to get the, the, the normal chicken stock or make it yourself at home then you can just use that but uh, at this point I had the cube so all I did was I took the cube and then uh, melted it in some hot water and then I let it sit for a while so that it completely melts and then that's the stock that I used. So then I added the stock into the butternut squash and then I let that simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes before I removed it from the heat. So now it's time to blend the soup. So I just put the whole entire 
so i just put the whole entire mixture of the stock the butternut squash onion and garlic with the seasoning into the blender and then i started off low and then i started going high and then once the um, the ones it started getting thick i decided to add more and more of the stock that i had left and when the stock was too little i added more water into it so in total the amount of water that i actually use is between 750 to um, one liter that all depends on how how that all depends on the and the wateriness that you want your but your soup to be so if you wanted it thicker then you you would let it be thick but i wanted mine to be a little bit more runnier so that's why i added more stock into it So after blending it, I added it back onto the to the stove again, on the on the pot, and then I just I just was warming it up, and then I tasted it for the seasoning to see if it was to my liking. So once I found out that it was not, I decided to add in some salt and pepper so that I could balance out the taste. And then once I got it to the state that I wanted it at, which is to taste, then I took it off of the heat. And then that's when I went to the serving side. So before we get to the serving, let us make some toppings for it. So on this, so I decided to make some croutons and I made them from white bread. All I did was cut them and at first when I was cutting it, I decided to cut off the crust because I wanted to throw away the crust and I was like, okay, no. Um, instead of throwing away the crust, let me use this, the whole, all of the slices. So that's what I did on the next one. So to the sliced bread, I added some oil, garlic, black pepper, and some ginger so that we could, we could oven bake the croutons. You can also fry them, but I actually prefer this one because it doesn't have as much oil in it. So you are going to roast the cubed bread at 170 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes until it turns into a, it gives you like a really nice golden brown color and it's also like um, it's also very hot. So everything was done, the soup was done, the croutons were done, and I toasted some white bread. And this is just me dishing out the soup, just so that I can show you my plating. I'm not the most skilled at plating, but I tried. I really did try, and it was not so bad. So this is just me showing you how I would normally plate it. Of course, it, for me, it feels like I was missing a little bit of greens, but I'm still trying to grow my own greens, and that's a whole, that's a whole other issue uh, that I'm going to try to do but at the like but i tried 
it's all brown you didn't look a pop of green or white or something but we make do with what we have pockets were not uh saying yes and the garden was also saying no but guys i tried and i don't think it was a bad job so do whatever you can put in some fresh herbs um put on some cream you can do whatever you want i'm just lactose intolerant and putting cream will just leave me in a situation the whole day so i decided not to add on any cream at all and there you go guys that's my plating done those are my dishes guys i really hope you like them i think they look good and it also tasted nice i said all of that in the last uh sentiments that i had on the video but they is trying to be all aesthetically pleasing and then yeah so guys that was the end of the cooking video so now i'm just gonna tell you how it actually how it actually tastes right this is the final presentation of it so i showed you two ways that i did it with one with toast just toasted white bread and this is with croutons uh, also made with white bread this is actually good um so the one thing i would say is i was kind of heavy-handed when it came to the uh, peri peri so it's like a lot in there reduce the the peri peri so i'd say don't put too much and then as you're cooking if you need more then just add more i think that would be the better way to go so let me just have this with some croutons That's actually very good. The texture of the croutons with it, it just absorbs and then it hits like your, you know, like your taste buds at the back. Guys, seriously, try this recipe. It's amazing. That tastes amazing. Even with the heat that coats your tongue, right? It still tastes amazing. Listen, I'm somebody that does not like butternut. And I made this and this tastes amazing. I'm surprised that I actually liked it because most of the time I actually do not like butternut. And, but butternut soup, guys, seriously, follow this recipe. I'm going to leave the amount and the method, of course, is in the video, so I don't need to leave you the method. But I will also write the methods just so that if you're doing the recipe, you can also just be reading on the bottom. But guys, I promise you, you will not regret this. This makes about three small bowls of the butternut soup. If you liked this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. And also comment down below if you tried the recipe. Tell me how it was for you and what other recipes you want me to make for you guys. Guys, well, thank you for watching and until next time, bye.